What is up guys, my name is Jack Gardner and welcome to yet another free lesson on a Friday. This time we're going to be taking a look at triad pairs within the Mixolydian scale in order to basically outline dominant seventh chords. Uh, but yeah, before we go into the teaching part of the lesson guys, I just want to say a massive thank you for all the support you've shown on my debut single, Sky Blue Pink, which released literally two days ago. Um, yeah, I've been blown away by the support and the views and the comments and everything like that, really. It means the world to me. I will be releasing the album Escapades on the 21st of June. I can't wait for you guys to hear that. But I'll leave a link to the music for those of you who haven't seen it already around here. I was actually thinking about taking maybe a little break from the free lessons from a Friday for this week. Seen as a single only just released, but I thought, no, I can't do that to you guys. I know a lot of you subscribed because you're used to seeing these videos uploaded every Friday. So, yeah, thanks, guys. Before we go into the teaching part again, please do make sure you like, comment, subscribe, click that little bell for notifications. I make free lesson content every Friday. And like I say in all of these videos, most of these lessons are based around suggestions that you guys make in the comment section. So, yeah, I'm always all ears. Let me know what it is that you guys want to learn. So without further ado, let's go into the teaching part then. Okay, so what are triad pairs? Well, essentially, you should just know what a triad is first. So if we are in G, remember this is kind of like a G dominant seven chord. We don't need the seventh for now. Let's just play the triad. We have root, third, and a fifth. That is our triad, if you like. That's the, the fundamental building block of most chords. Now, a triad pair is when we basically harmonize the scale. So in terms of a dominant seventh chord, the go-to scale is mixolydian, which is this. So technically, we would use that as the scale, but we can build triads on each degree of this scale. Now the two which we're gonna to use today, actually, are gonna be built from the root, so we'd have a G major triad, and then from the flat seven. So the flat seven in G is actually F, so we get this. That is a major triad as well. So why does that work? Well, essentially, the F against the G is the flat seven. The A against the G is gonna be the ninth. And then the C against the G is gonna be the 11th. Remember, we are thinking against the G root note. So if you play that chord all together, you'll get something like this. I'm sure you recognize that from the backing track, but it's also in loads of pop tunes, basically. Like, you think back to, like, Luther Vandross, Never Too Much, and his solo on that a few years ago. It's that chord, essentially. It sounds wicked. Love that feel and sound. Now, the thing is, really, is this functions as a dominant seventh chord. Why? It's basically like a G11 chord, if you like. It's got the root, flat seven, ninth, and then it's got the eleven. If you want to play the octave as well, you've got that, or you can put the G root again on the top and you get this. As well. It's a gorgeous sound. Now, here's the key. You can use this information both in your chordal playing or in your single line playing, and it's going to work, it's going to outline that G7 or G11 sound. So, I mean, so long as you've got the root notes of G, as a guitar player, we don't have to play the root. Imagine there's a bass player there. You could just play these triads everywhere. All over that G root. Like, let's listen maybe in context if I can play G roots against all of these. So you'd have... That works. about this one, all of these are working, hopefully you can hear that gives the sound of a dominant 11th chord. So what else can we do with these then? Well in the lines then this is where it can get really interesting. So just by hearing this hopefully you can hear that this is outlining that chord sound. If I go something like this. Ignore that note I played, that was wrong, that was a minor there, but... That to me straight away sounds like G mixolydian, it sounds like that chord. 
So what you can do really is experiment with them because they're so close together. Try playing them as chords, like I say, in your comp, but also try them as lines. Try little sequences like this. Oh, show you. That's gonna work really well. I think that line actually sounds really nice by itself. If you go. So really slow. I'm just going from the major third of G. Root. Down the triad. Then I'm playing an F triad, starting from the third. Then I'm going to a G from the root. Then take it down, a whole step down to the F. Just sounds huge to my ears. That's a really cool way of outlining this sound. So yeah, guys, I hope all of this makes sense. I apologise if I seem a bit wrecked today. I think the whole album process and single process is taking it out of me. I hope all of that makes sense. If you've got any questions, please leave them down below in the comment section. Thanks again for checking this out, guys. If you did enjoy that, make sure you leave a like, leave a comment, like I just said. Give me your requests as well. And don't forget to subscribe. Click that little bell for notifications. Guys, thanks again. Till next time. Cheers.